Capitol Hill's moving. Um, so yeah, I become a big fan of this man. Yep, you and me both. The hill changes have definitely been a big improvement. Let's get into impact then. One to zero currently in the form of Radiant Esports. They have moved factions. They are now on the COG team. That is the blue side if you are new to Gears of War. And uh, OBN, they are on the swarm side. Actually hopping forward to a straight line now to see if he can start off this map just as he did in the previous one with the strong shotgunning. Currently it's all about this table on the far, far left of our screen. Mix them with a one kill. Buzz have, uh, does have a trade back there as well. And Trimax and Co. Does look like they're trying to back out, but you feel as though OBN should be able to wrap up these remaining kills. Yeah, and get control. Yeah, absolutely. From, where, from, the, from the situation that they're in, it's flanks in, in theory. Shouldn't be pushing down here. He should be playing his life, playing safe. Doesn't want to cost the team another death. He's been able to get down in the process. Well, the kill in the process. So fair play to Frank. He's been able to do some good work. And he's picking up exactly where he left last map. Getting himself a kill on the board early. And here comes the player. 4v3 situation over towards the B hill. Smokes go in. OBN looking to find kills and position at the same time. Straight line's been caught out here. Tri Trimax will clean up that kill. Gaz does fall shortly thereafter, and the control is clearly in the favor of OBN. The question is whether well, they'll continue to get these kills. Fraser's backed out. There's not gonna be any like, drastic pushes or triple cap scenarios just yet, but it's a change of control at B, and that's the important thing. It's been back and forth already. Brad may actually with an overextension of that. No, say, I, I do like these overextensions a lot. They're very, people, don't look too much into it now it's a very what's the word that i'm looking for here but it's a, it's a role that you have to be you have to be intelligent in the game to know what you're doing you have to know where people are at all times you have to, to make these you can't just randomly run over towards the hill i'm overextending guys like it just doesn't work like that and a lot of the time when i'm seeing these players do it they're working well for the team they're either stalling they're able to get a hill because somebody else is having to rotate back to cause a 2v1 situation and then they're losing a hill over where they're outmanned so Say some of these plays that these teams are making are really spot on, and I'm actually impressed with the way that both teams are performing here right now. Straight line with the opener on Mixum. Should be the ticket to pushing into B here. Flanks just choosing the passive approach, getting the Lancer damage in, but he hasn't accounted for the last player in, inside. That's Buzz. Kills are stacking here. Two players left alive in the form of Mixum and Trinda. Will they be overextending though? Doesn't seem like. We could, actually, he's just playing it slow at this point in time, just spreading out. The points fit does stay the way it is currently. It will be OBN that uh, win this round, but Radiant coming off a 10 second respawn time up. They're all alive, they're all pushing very soon. So that was a point where they, the overextension wasn't really needed there. You know, it's a short round, um, say if it was around maybe the third round in, but say scrap that, uh, there's a big fight going off over towards B. So we've got Radiant are flying in now towards OBN, and so it's a trade one for one at the moment. Straight line is in a sticky situation, can he do anything with it? Unfortunately, he has fallen, and now Buzz is the man who's overextended. The last the They should be playing this safe, so they're able to take him out with ease. Yeah, Buzz very weak. Can he get a kill now? Trimax shuts him down. They'll need one hill now to finish off this round. 205, 206, and there's the 207. First round going the way on Radiant. Right, so that could be um, a, a, a fantastic start for Radiant, don't get me wrong. You have, you've just won the last map, so that's now their third round that they've won in a row. So if you look at it like that, it was five, it was six, five, they were six, five down. It's the third round that they've won in a row. Um, I don't know how OBN are going to start to feel about this. So don't get me wrong. I know they are fantastic individual players, but as a, how, how are they going to react? How are they, are they going to be able to keep their cool? Have they got somebody on that team with the maturity? They have freeze, but is he going to be able to keep his team on a level where they don't need to be worried? They just need to be calm, play their game, just play it out. There's nothing for them to worry about. I'm just hoping that we're going to be able to see that come out of them and it's not just going to be the way they fall to pieces. In the end, that first round was simply just a back and forth exchanging of B Hill control. And mm -hmm. I think the points did just go the way of one team in the end. Yeah. There, there's no you know, difference about it. The question is whether, whether anything else will be changed up. Of course, the two spots there have been blocked in parking and hospital, so that's not going to be influencing the B Hill battle. Hambish, Retro, etc. First kill opening from Mixum. B hole should be captured as uh, no, it's actually in fact it's not. The lances are a little bit too strong there from OBN. There's the capture. Actually, there's the rotation as well. Look what mm. Radiant, uh, OBN rather are doing right now. Now, so the, the, the initial on that started the round, you see Straight Land pushing towards the B hill, and there was two people from Radiant. So Flanks was one down there, and there was another. So there were two people close onto the actual T, whereas Radiant had two people Lancerin. Don't get me wrong, Lancerin is a fantastic way, and you'll be able to get angles on your team. But when you're that close with a shotgun, and one guy's just walking out into the open right there with two people with a shotgun, that's something that I don't, that I genuinely feel that they haven't actually discussed very well 
there in that situation or, or maybe straight line wasn't supposed to run out but hey that's the, the reason they've lost the initiation there and it's going to be two down now for OBN Gazel yeah, 4 Buzz gets killed back as OBN have pushed up quite heavily on one side Cog Domination might come in on the last though I'm checking over to the C hill that has been broken over at the B Ooh. hill though but I feel like the damage is done just for a second look at this points lead that's building B hill capture once again with Trinder not got enough support to hold on for now OBN do live to fight another day here in this round. But a nice little setup once again, building. Oh, absolutely. Smart play by Trinder there. And he's rotated out at the right time. He stored him for as long as he could. Now, this is where the push is coming over towards the B heel. So you can see three people now for OBN are going to be making the push down that stairs towards the B. But straight line's already fallen. So he's gone down very early in this potential push. But Bradmate's been able to equal that. So it's a 4v4 situation. Whoever gets this next kill could be vital for the break. Obian pushing heavily through the middle. This could be a 2v1 against Mixum. They're pushing from the right as well. So can Buzz get oh. the opening kill? Yes, he can. He oh. the double as well. Flank should fall over on the side. Yep, he will fall. That's three members down. Can't see any other players. Although, actually, Trinder did push out just a little bit. He's not being caught out. I'd like him to actually be called out right now. Pinch, perhaps, from, from the other side of the map. But he's been left to just run across the map. Flank Gaz and get back to the safety of his home now. Yeah, it's a very smart play by Trimax there. Just rolls back, knows that he's got support from Trino. Just lands him down as he comes steam training towards him. This is an 80-point lead now for Radiant. So for me, personally, when you've got an 80-point lead like this, I'm not one to sit back on that hill. And it doesn't look like they want to do that either. They're just flying out. They've just got the kills, flying out, getting beat, securing this. Because, you know, the worst thing you can do is just sit on that one home hill. Because if you lose those fights there, you, it's, it's done. That's the round. Yeah, essentially, that is the round. Brad made great shocking, but not enough. Trinder stays alive, and there is the end mark hit once again. And, uh, you know, Radium, they're off to a good start once again, no, as yes. we said. That's, that's four rounds in a row now, obviously spanning over the two maps for Radium. So they've obviously seemed to really click. Trimax has started off really well this map. Just looking over towards the... So this is the, this is the boys that you can see on your screen now of OBN now. Phrase appears to be the, the leader here. He's talking across um, down to his team, letting them know um, what he seems to think that's going wrong and something that needs to be changed. Just want to see what they can what they can do here, really. So they seem to be losing the, the shotgun battles now. They seem to... It just doesn't seem as stable. They're not able to get actually a, a, a hold of this game to get their setups in. It's just something that they're just really, really struggling with at this moment. Frag grenades, meanwhile, placed down in uh, cockpit by... Brad, mate. Keep a close eye on that kick, uh, that quick pickup. Can be picked up, thrown in the smoke, as we said on Dam earlier. Can be a differentiator, but I don't see it playing out too differently, at least with numbers. Um, no, pretty much a mirrored strategy once again. And he's been back and forth on the B hill, and this initial honestly means everything at this point, given that they can get the leg up from the get go. Brad, mate, on board with him, actually. Oh, Crap, solid great shot. shotgun and fantastic stuff. Thanks for the quick pickup. Uh, of the nades, it's all going very well for them. Don't push in there, because uh -oh. there's a nade in there. Uh, hello? Okay, uh, Crump's not dead somehow. I'm guessing that went out the map. Mo that must the have map. done, must we, have done. We reacted the same way. Uh, Crump was alive at the end of that. B held, captured by him. Bit of extension from straight line. Does find the kill on, Tr on Trinder. Just to keep things alive there. Uh, see how broken, so. A bit more passive, well, passive, but uh, a bit more neutral in game plan, I suppose you could say. Both teams trading points now. Yeah, absolutely. And um, so it's, they've been able to pick up both home hills. Great land swing there from straight land. And something I've noticed the last three rounds is every single initiation has gone in the favor of Radiant. They've been able to pick up that first kill every single time. Now, that's something that is starting to play out. And it's going to be a big factor if, they, if that's the way it's playing out and they're starting to lose these rounds. Yeah, straight line, very red, does get cover the cover of table and time uh, and, and just to like you know echo that a little bit maybe the momentum is you know in radiant side you know maybe their shotguns their sh their map winning shotguns are now really playing a big part in these initials and you'd like to see OBN just be a bit more active perhaps in these b-hole battles you know they're not they haven't really got the energy that we once saw at pumping station on dam it really is starting to get the way of of radiant at least at the start of rounds let's see Crump and Trimax gets the kills. Trimax oh. a double of that. This might be the energy we wanted to see. A bit more snappy gameplay. Trinder overextended to the A-Hill. This is looking very good. If he can pick up a kill. No. Caught out with his pants down. Lance is still in his hands. Brad mate cleaning that one up. Yeah, so obviously he's got his he's Lancer out there to try and obviously kill someone's comp. He's obviously he's been snuck up on too fast by Brad, and he's just been, like you say, caught with his pants down. Not really 
I expect more from Trinder really in that situation. He should he should be knowing better and playing. But there is an, uh, another push coming in and, and a squeeze at the same time. And it's oh, a great play by Trimax. I love that that Marcus skin as well. It's fantastic. Very nice black steel variant indeed. Two players pushing out straight line. Can he find the shot can kill on Trimax? No, oh. great movement from Trimax has oh. to be said. Shots were on point. Movement even better. And he will back out as he knows his team are doing very well. Numbers wise on that side of the map and overextension as well over to A. If points aren't really uh, looking too good as of now, we want to see if they can change that. Yeah, absolutely. So this is something that they're not going to be able to hold for too long, now, especially with you stepping out like that. So for me, with those two people who have virtually rotated over towards the home hill, that's where I go straight off and I'm going towards B. I'm getting the break on B. Yeah, you can have your home hill back. We'll get the B set up, then come to us. You have to push us. Now, this, is all, this, this round is all set up for OBN to take this and get their first round back on the board. Smoke being thrown on flanks. He's not going to have any teammates next to him just for now. You can tell the clock is ticking, but let's get the break on the last. There's one teammate passing to his left. Frag grenades thrown into the mix. They've got the break, but they do need to overextend now. They need to stop this hill from capping immediately, and I think they're even going to get there in time now. 203, 204. Oh, flanks. He's ran. Can he get there in time? 206, 207. It's very close. I think he's a little bit too late. 208, 209. He is literally oh, half milliseconds. A second. If that late. ridiculously close, you know, just watching watching Flanks' movement, it, honestly, is, I'm really impressed. So like, mm, like I say, he was killing everything on the on the map before, even though we didn't actually realise it until he had to a certain amount of kills, because he wasn't exactly just filling up the board, and he wasn't that was watching him all the time, unfortunately. But it's he seems his movements extremely solid. His uh, decision making extremely it's really unfortunate. There's milliseconds that he just missed out and be able to um, unbreak there that home hill and cause uh, trouble for OBN, but. That's their first round that they've been able to get in the last that's what the last four or five rounds. So I imagine that's going to calm some nerves in them, and hopefully they're going to be able to play a little bit more their style that they that they should be playing really. Yeah, two to one is a lot better than three to zero as a Dutch bond on the first map. Uh, definitely the case here, considering momentum now after that one. Incendiaries placed down at tail. Now this will spark a little bit more proactivity, perhaps in the home hills. All the players leave the home hills. Yes, they will. One player was waiting for it on the cog side. Now it's still going to be a 1v1. They will make that a 2v1, actually. Trend again lit up. I think maybe a 2v2 in terms of lance damage, but Gaz does get the better of them. Mix and pulling out. And with those incense, Gaz can actually try and hold the home hill. You might be able to catch out some players. Maybe the reason why he's overextended there. Meanwhile, Brad oh. may throw in a frag into the mix. Is that going to catch anyone out? No, great. Nice little up A. Does fine crump. Damage building. The numbers is there, too. So there should be a retake if they play the numbers right. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, good shot got in from Brad, mate. So, he's used the nade um, as a distraction. He's been able to push some people off the B hill. And then now the OBN team have been able to take control. And you can see from the over, o overlay. So, we've got two people sat, three people over towards the um, Radiance home. And you've got two people towards the B stairs. But it looks like they're going to do a push for the, yeah, they're going to be doing a push for, the, for, the, for both home hills. And you can see one of the members of OBN is actually rotating off. So I should imagine two or three people towards defending this home hill. Are they going to do a simultaneous push? No, it looks like just one big push. And as you can see through, well, the um, you can actually see the Locust team um, overextending over towards Radiance home hill at the same time as you yeah. can see going down nice now. Nice little counter. Flanks, once again, consistent shotgunning as we're on board at this point of view. But the switch to the other home hill, Trinder has cut down Bradmate and that has stopped that push right there and then they're going to pull back to B and actually they've lost it. Yeah, they're in a bad spot. For now. So they're in it. It was a smart play, don't get me wrong, from, the, from OBN. So they've, they've, they've overextended over towards enemy home, home hill because that's exactly what Radiant was doing to them. But one of their players, have, I, they've, they've just gone, no, we're out of here. But this, it's already too late at this point. They've got somebody, they've got two people on Radiant's home hill and two people on B. They're caught in a sandwich and this is the aftermath. Great answer from Trinda, finds a kill on Gaz. Oh. not going to clean things up, finds that shot as well. But oh. straight line is there to shut things down at B Hill just to stop this triple cap for now. Clearly the overextension is coming to fruition. But straight line shotgun is still too strong. He finds Mixum, still pushing for the Three. kill. Finds Trinda, can he find the kill on Krupp? No, Krupp says, I don't want any of that. I'm going to slow it down. Straight line, he is aggressive. He wants to find that remaining kill. But there comes the lance fire. But his job's done, let's be honest. Absolutely. He's done a fantastic job of, in fact, saving the round in that process over at the B Hill. Yeah, three kills. So it was, I think Flanks was unfortunate with the new brother that he hit at the start. But yeah, fantastic play from straight line. Three kills and yeah, rightfully so, Crump. To be honest, you're not, when a guy's just got three kills in a row, you're not going to be, you, you don't want to run towards him if I'm honest. Because he's, 
he's not missing shots really, is he's he, at that point? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you're just like, you know, I'm not running towards the blaze. I'm going to run the opposite way. In send, thrown into the mix. Doesn't catch a player there on that cover. Things slowing down once again in this round for the next push. You see flanks coming through. That smoke in the X-ray. Only catch a straight line with Lancer. No. Straight line says no. Nice little up A around the corner. Wrap around shot, if you will. Straight line still hungry. Look at the points, though. This is still in favor of Team OBN oh. after straight lines play. Try match with a shotgun fight. Opener does find the kill. Mixon will clean up the second. This is important. He, they need to break B. They need to start being aggressive. The points are starting to run away from them. 20 left for that 210 mark. Yeah, so 20, like you said, 20 left for the 210 mark. And uh, it's unfortunate, though, because OBN have been able to hold their nerve there. So we're just going to be waiting for that. So it's 204, 205, 206, 207. So come back, come back complete pretty much from OBN. It's now 2 2. Basically resetting the the map, if you will. It's back to 0 0 if you, if you want to look at it that way. But say, great play from OBN that round. The, the last two rounds, they are starting to step on it. It looked like. Someone has resurrected straight line, and um, <laughs> he started yeah. to. Um, it's a bit harsh. I don't want to say resurrected, but you can't expect somebody to perform at a high level I, constantly, constantly, yeah, constantly. I, I want to know his secret. Was it something he consumed before the maps or something? You know, like, something. The team talks. You know, it might be really effective for Obian. Who knows what it is right now? But let's bring up the scoreboard. Actually, check out the kills here. Brad, mate, 15 kills. Once again, a high performer in the slaying department. Always has been, uh, to be honest, in, in Gears of War. Definitely one of the slayers in any roster. He's he's competed with. Straight line with nine kills, so he's not really extending too far uh, past his teammates, but, you know, it's all about the kills that matter. Exactly. And he's had the kills that matter, especially in, in this map thus far. Yeah, massively influential in winning the team that round with those that three piece that he's got and also telling Crump to walk the opposite way because he doesn't want any of this. But that going on, Flanks has been able to pick up a two piece. He's also then been able to pick up the M-bar, but Mixum has fallen. Flanks has then fallen, so the M-bar's down on... Is the M-bar down and out, or is it just burnt? Too sure, actually. 3v3, though, nonetheless. There's still a battle for control at B. It's a bit back and forth this round as to who takes it. It's not clear cut. Straight line comes through. He gets the double. Nicely done. And that will be the frag grenades rewarded to his teammate, Fraze. Will they go for the triple, though? Of course, the respawn timer is increasing. This becomes an opportunity for aggressive pushes off the initial. Instead, as we can see in the Hobart, they are going to slow things down and have control in every side of the map here. M-bar, of course, was put down right in the center there next to B, uh, for those who did not uh, see that. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure the M-bar's actually been burnt, so we're going to have to wait a few more minutes until we're able to see that. I'll just double-check in that, and yeah, it looks like it has been burnt. <laughs> it's a 20-point lead for OBN. They are in the better spot, but I'm waiting for Raiden to make this push um, so they can actually claim B back. Oh, but the nades are coming in. Flanks to play the extra safe. That frag grenade took an age to blow up, as Flanks' body language showed. Big shotgun fights coming through. Crump gets the single. Trimax gets the single as well there. And that should be another player down. Yeah, only Buzz left alive. And is he going to run? Is he going to hold on? He's going to hold. For now, he could be landed in the back very shortly. But he's holding his ground nicely. Will he get that kill? Nicely done. Back to cover. A reset. Flanks is still fighting. The overextensions come through. He's not got enough health to push through for B. But the break has come through from straight line. But is it enough? Doesn't look like Fraze should fall here. Uh -huh. And finally, a triple cap in this map. Three to two. Only one game left of this half. And yet again, it's back and forth. Yeah, absolutely. Heads up play from Trinidad there. Rotating straight away over towards the towards OBN's home hill. Now, for me, the, the way that so it was... The last... The, the, the kill, it was, I believe it was Crump. It, he was over towards like, the L side, wasn't he? And he's been able yep. to pick up a kill on um, one of the Radiant members. Now, I'm not a big fan of deaths in that situation, to be perfectly honest. So you've got three people with you. You've got a guy there. It doesn't actually matter in the, the, the long term of things because Trindo had his heads up playing and was over on that home hill. But if Trindo hadn't actually done that and gone over towards that home hill, that could have caused a problem because they're coming on spawn. They're in a 5v4. They're going to be pushing towards the hill and they're going to be able to put you back on, on, on the back foot. So, but it's a regardless. Trindo's a smart player there. was able to win them the round in the end. And... Um, Puts, puts them back at a, um, a one-point lead. Well said. Now the sniper is going to come through and replace that M-bar. Don't think he'll influence the strategies too much. I'm not sure which one I'd rather at this point in time, to be honest. Frag grenades picked up, though, meanwhile, from Bradmate. Could that kind of find Mixum? No, it will not find Mixum. Mixum's still alive despite the damage against him. Will he get the kill on Bradmate? No, that's crucial. That could be very important numbers later nope. on. So here comes Frank rolling in. He does get dropped. Gaz with the pickup of the incense. This is looking good. 
for this side if they can use the power weapons as the respawn timer of course has built up so much the last round of the half as I mentioned earlier could have led to something could it lead to something here Chip cap coming in. trying to break it can he get there in time yes he can for the break Crump's still alive the kills are stacking up oh oh shoot the right person though Crump is left alive and he's got B control Oh, that is so unfortunate for Braze Days. He's actually just taken out one of his team. And Crump's been able to capitalize and take out the last remaining member of OBN who was over this hill. But now Crump's in a bad spot. He should be able to just hold his shots here. Tries to go for the wraparound. Doesn't quite find straight line. Straight line holding his nerve. Finds that kill with help of Lancer Fire from his back. Makes him pushing through. Perhaps a pistol would have been better from straight line. But no, he doesn't care. He knows his shotgun's on point. He will find that kill. Will he get the revive? It is back and forth with the damage. Who is going to get final control of the B-Hill is still up in the air. So he's called straight line for a reason. There's, there's, there's no pause. There's no nonsense, if you were, where it's just you're going to die. He's just running around at people. He's having a good time out there. And it's Radiant who have got themselves in oh, a good position at the moment. Brad makes over extending here. So this should be an easy death or an easy kill, should I say, for Radiant. Now, for me, they're... Probably not the best place to do an overextension, but it doesn't. Maybe it wasn't overextension. Maybe they're actually playing for these home hills. Incense, or incense should be up very soon. Sniper picked up by flanks. The triple cap is blinking. Someone's got to get there for the break, and will they be able to get there in time? Yes, they will. Both on the B hill and the A hill. A hill lost. B hill is the question. No, nope. Gaz does stay alive and has sniper control. Will it be a headshot? No, it will not. No, so yeah, big heads up play play by there, by guys. He's had, to, he had, to take, he had to win his 1v1 over at B, and uh, as a reward, he's kept his team in the game, and he's also picked up a sniper. But they're in his face, he has needs and sniper. He's not in the best spot, though. He's well, the weapons have been burned if he does die at this point in time. Big oh! up, eh? fantastic stuff. Can he go back? Oh. Find Trinder? No, he cannot. Lovely play from Gaz, honestly. Burned two weapons and saved the round there. Maybe, maybe could have gone out, honestly, with the nades and the sniper. He was a little bit quicker on his feet, but. Nonetheless, yeah, so I've seen Tri Tri yeah, Trimax was literally off his ass as soon as he picked up those nades. He was literally on his case. Burning the nades, say so heroics really by being, actually, being able to get a single kill in the situation he was in. So fair play to him. And Ooh. Crump's hiding in the smoke there, cheeky play. Lovely job. Almost stayed alive as well. As one player only was on his case. Got to keep a close eye on the top left though, folks. 170, 147. Currently, it's the last round of the half. Respawn timer is not that forgiving. And currently, it is Radiant Esports with the advantage with the home hill set up. Will it stay like that? Fantastic landstring from Flanks and Mixon catching out Gaz there. Sea Hill broken though. Straight line just gone up behind, broken that one. They know they need to keep going though, they need to keep moving, breaking the B hill, moving over to the A hill as well. Yes, yeah, so. Uh Oh, 203. So we paused on 203. So all they need to do is get, get this hill and get to 207, and Radiant will be able to get give themselves more breathing space if you want. There it is. So, so they've done a, a really good job there. They lost two rounds back to back. They've now so they won two rounds back to back. They lost two rounds back to back. They've won two rounds back to back. So now it's a, a case of are they able to press this forward with the actual map? Well, with the hill changes now. So we're going to be introducing EDNF onto the map, or is this maybe a hill and um, rotations on this side that that uh, that OB that OBN are going to prefer? Yeah, that is the question. The difference is that we're at 4-2 at the second half on this map, not 3-3 as it was in the first half. And this time, Radiant keeping up the momentum, it seems, after the victory on Dam. Let's see how this one pans out. A little bit different numbers-wise. We've got three players going the way of Hospital, two players the way of Parking. Bit of a differential there. Trinder looking to push up. He's got the Lancer from uh, some from his back rather both players having some bit of lance support not going to lead to much as a trading of kills on board and mix them as it could be an aggressive push to try and catch out the players here on the right straight line there's a straight line crump there in the back but crump turns round still an aggressive push but will they push up yes they will no nonsense no nonsense from radiant they're just let they're just going full well they're going they're going deep should we say and um so smart play by them there. So they've lost a player really early on in the push. They thought there's no point in doing this now. We're just going to back off. We'll just cut our losses here and now. Trenton's been able to get himself a break on this. So I wouldn't recommend going for the cap. Smart play. Jump tight. going to wait for his teammates to spawn and going to have more men around. So there's going to be quite a big fight, I imagine, over towards this E side. Yeah, so many numbers now set up in the E hill. We don't see this usually. You know? This is one of the map, kind of like the Forge of old, uh, where 
more players are sent to the home street, right, because of how easy it is to push and maybe hold the time as well. Uh, with the numbers heavily on this side, you see actually OBN taking advantage, running through the center of the map, trying to get a little bit of a flank. They've picked up kills on the way. And Trender and Co here, Crump, is just going to be sat back and pinch for the time being. Yeah, I say, I'm, I'm liking it. So OBN, yeah, they're, they're down two rounds and they seem to be getting they was getting out maneuver the last two rounds, but they're still being proactive. They're still making pushes. They're still making plays. They are the one who's they are the team in the better position at the moment with the two cap, and you can see the way that they set up as well. That they are the ones who are the, the more forward. But potentially, it looks like there's going to be another play from Radiant over towards this E hill with the cross angles. And it could be a simultaneous play. So E has been broken, and it looks like they might be going towards D, maybe putting pressure on there, potentially going for a three cap. Is that is that really in there? Arsenal right now. Well, they'll definitely push for the D hill. We know double caps and holding the home street is a lot more forgiving on this side. Just like foundation. Home hill set up in the second half is very can be can prove very fruitful, but Trimax does shut down straight line over at this E hill. So the numbers they have to play with here. Frey's oh. a battle over the cover. Crump with the victory down. This could be a triple. Gotta keep an eye on that D hill. That's the first they know gas is coming. Way to, to stop this. Triple cap, excuse me, here comes Gaz with the flank. That will stop things in its tracks, but the score is so close. Oof. But the double cap and Trinder Hyder on the corner catching up the player of Gaz. Yeah, it seems to be uh, two, two moments of um, people hiding there. So Gaz coming on the flank, Trinder hiding around the corner. So there's a smart heads up play from him. Trinder's not in a great spot now, though, so I don't know why he's rotated over to this side of the map, but. Not a great corner to be sat in. It really is. He's used his smoke to stay alive. His health is even fully regenerated. Fantastic stuff from him. Teammates just around the corner to make sure he can get through. 2.02, 2.03, as we should be reaching the finale of this round. Yes, we will. This will be cock round, my friends. Radiant Esports, they're starting to get momentum. They've had three rounds of this now. Looking very calm about it all as well. And OBN, I'll have to check the camera on them. There they are. Very mellow. Nothing much being said. No change in strategies, it seems. Just going with the flow and that flow currently is not very good for them is it no that flow is downstream and that is <laughs> heading towards the crocodile's mouth it's just <laughs> they they are not they're not in a good situation at the moment that what you can't the worst thing you could do when you are losing rounds is just sit there and say absolutely nothing at all obviously you're annoyed that you're losing the rounds in the way that you are losing the rounds or whatever but you can't just sit there and just pure silence because what the same things are just going to happen. You need to quickly address what's going off. You need to express why it's happening and maybe potentially, potentially do a different strat that you've got set up or something that you notice that the team are doing or where they're weak and push that point, not just sit there in silence. So I'm hoping they've had a little talk with themselves. And I've also noticed Radiant as well. They've been pretty quiet. Um, so they, I, I imagine that they just see that it's going to coast this through now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In action, I think, it, I think is a great way to describe this, right? If, if players' morale is down as it seems to be for OBN, I'd rather get them energetic get them a bit more hyped, you know, focused in on the game and change, you know, the thoughts and potential outcome. Don't think about the current scoreline, think about the rounds ahead and that is the most crucial factor. Torpo was a force drop down, straight line, the man to pick that up. He will need a revive though from his teammates, should be fine as he crawls around the corner. Only Mixon can land to that angle there and they have it. Oh, <laughs> Trimax hiding around the corner. Does find a kill, oh. finds a second. Straight line is the one with the Torpo though. He will run for the hills, literally his F hill here. And he has a little bit of height advantage now to play with that Torpo. Of course, with that weapon, with the score differential not being that much, early days, early on in this round, they can take their time and formulate a nice push. Yeah, absolutely. And a cheeky swap there of weapons that you can see. So obviously, Brad Mate is their designated Torpo player. Is the reason that they actually put this down. Trimax, I'm not going to lie, scared the bejeebas out of me, right? He's, I didn't actually see him there on the camera. He's just come and just wiped off two people like it was nothing. And again, you can see that Radiant are the ones. They're putting the Torpo down. And OPN are just allowing them to have it. So it was causing them trouble on the last map on Dam. I don't understand why they're giving it up again. And there's gorgeous. the first kill. Absolutely gorgeous Torpo stick there. Active. Can pull it that quick. Catches out Trinder. No time to react at all. And just overlooking this E-Hill, he can just pull it. He can keep heads down. But nonetheless, Frazier, he's still pushed in. There's been no help from either from either player there, Brad, mate, or Buzz to speak of. And Buzz still alive here. Don't get me wrong, Buzz, the, excuse me. But the, the way that the, the OBN team play um, when they have the hills, I, I like the way that they're trying to do things. They're trying to do things uh, methodically, or if you will. But they're... I just don't feel like their teamwork's always there all the, all the time, or they maybe don't have a confident enough shot leader, shot caller who's calling out enough. 
like the, the way they're trying to play is great. Um, but it just they like say now it just doesn't seem to be working for them at the moment and they're just doing random heads up plays and they're just getting caught out for it. But look at Mixon. Runs through so many players once again. They just keep catching players out. And you can see the score is clearly in the favor of Radiant now. It is proving such an uphill battle for OBN, even with Torpo, even with, you know, as you as you touch upon the methodical play, it's just not leading to much whatsoever. Their execution in all of the, their strats right now is just lackluster. Uh, I'd hate to see this go down on 2-0, to zero, but OBN do need to pick it up. Look at the score still. Radiant have the Torpo control. They have such a huge score lead. They've got E control. It's looking very good for them, and they should be able to take this round no problem at all. Yeah. So, well, we're gonna we'll have to wait another nine seconds for well, five seconds now. But yeah, it's gonna be Radiant's round, and they're six two up. Um, not much noise coming from them. I imagine we'll have a quick look at them, so you can see Trinda giving out the fist bumps and the awkward high five to the fist bump and the grabbing of the high five and all sorts <laughs> is going on. But you know, what I mean, they're celebrating their their round win either way. I don't know if we're gonna have a quick switch on onto the the OBN team, because I imagine at this point they are pretty deflated. They still need to keep their heads up, they still need to talk, they need to p potentially put something big down, okay? So if they're all confident in themselves with a shotgun, they can maybe put a boom shot down, or if they've got a playmaker with a sniper, maybe put a sniper down, or a drop shot, or something. There must, there must be something that they practice for when they are when they do have their backs up against the wall and it's this, they've got the sniper I like dropped. it, I like it, honestly. Brad, mate, he had that talk bow, he rotated it back, and we, we touched upon it, it's methodical. Clearly OBN, both on Dam and this map, that's been their approach. And with the snipers placed down on home hills, that is going to slow things down. You can't just run at home street anymore. You can rotate that sniper up top, just as what, uh, where Bradmate was earlier with that talk bow, and that can really slow down the gameplay. Bradmate proving to be the power weapon player, perhaps, for this side. He's picking that sniper up this time around. Maybe, just maybe, this could be an influential weapon swap. A weapon placement, rather. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got well, we've got Crump with a sniper for Radiant, and we've got Bradmate. So clearly, we can see that Bradmate is obviously the, the the power weapon player for this team, anyway. Uh, Trin has now fallen. Vexen has been able to get a kill, but no, Trin has been revived. Trin has then got a kill, and he's got to pick up Vexen. But Bradmate's in there. Brad's fallen, but he's been able to trade with Trinda. So it's a free cap coming in, and is this is this the end for OBN? Are they going to be able to get a break? Buzz has bought some time by breaking as he will eventually fall, but are the numbers there? No, they are not going to get there in time. This will be the conclusion of the match. Radiant Esports, mellow finish. Trinda straight away up at his feet, happy with the conclusion. And honestly, 7 2, never would have predicted that, ever. I know I predicted Radiant to win, by the way. I'll just remind that. Yeah, you did. The wound. But 7 2, hands of my heart, didn't predict that one for the second map. No, definitely not. So obviously, I predicted for I predicted OBN to win anyway. So to me, it's a complete shock that they that they've just been turned over like that seven two. Now that seven six, yeah, um, Radiant definitely just took the momentum that they was able to get from winning that really tight map, and they just I don't want to say it, but they hammered them in the second map. Very, very true indeed. And seven six seven two, it was very close first map, mm -hmm. second map. I think that. I think I'm going to go ahead and just say that's momentum-based, perhaps. Maybe. I'm not too sure if it was the map. I think it was just more so that Radiant shotguns at times were just so much more effective. They were so much more clued in. Mm -hmm. Many fantastic uh, plays by them. And, you know, when they had the triple cap opportunity, they took a of that, and it was the show in the scoreline. 7-2, uh, got to give it to them. They performed very well. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely, definitely did. They really played very well in the... Well, the last few rounds anyway. The initial, they started winning every single time at the start. Yep. So there was nothing really that they could do there. And I just felt like, I just felt like OBN had just run out of, run out of questions. There's no gas. There's they no run engine. out of answers you even. Know, yeah. There was nothing, nothing proactive about them. Um, it was a bit switch heavy, I'll say, at uh, the B Hill. You know, it was back and forth at times. But it just kind of like, it just kind of seemed like Radiant had a little bit more spark, a bit more... Um, action and, and proactivity in, in all regards throughout yeah. the map, you know? Definitely, there was more oomph for them going, yeah. and it's like you said, it's the momentum that was carrying them through. Yeah. I don't see the sniper put down in the last round. Maybe you could do that a little bit earlier. Maybe put a boom shot down. You might have a, every team, I imagine, has got something that they do around a boom. Even if it's put a boom and just go endless chicken and yeah. just go in and yeah, win yeah. the fights. So I'm sure they all believe in themselves. They're all confident in their own abilities to actually win those fights. Now, if you're stuck and you're, you've got nothing more left to do, nothing else left to do, just put the boom down and you may as well go yeah. for it. You may as well try and win. Give it a go. Yeah, exactly. I think we could tell from the last few rounds that they were deflated, right? You mm. could tell from the faces, you could tell from the gameplay. I think a boom shot, you know, 
itself could have been very dramatic and how it changed it. Definitely. You know, forced them to get active and aggressive and forced the shotguns and really, you know, change up the gameplay, but it wasn't the case in the end. Maybe a golden opportunity for, uh, for OBN there, but maybe missed out. Nonetheless, our next game is Fable versus DZ. We know who the favorite is for that one. Absolutely. It's got to be Fable, of course, formerly of course. Exxon, for those unaware. But for now, we're going to take it to a quick break. When we return, we will have that game, guys. Thank you for tuning in. We'll be back soon.